There are two things you need to understand when it comes to SAP change management. One is the organizational change management that focuses on the human aspect of change, addressing how people transition from the current to the desired states. The other one is the technical change management that deals with the systematic approach to managing technical changes within the SAP environment. In this video, we are going to focus on the technical change management aspect in SAP. The agenda of the video is as follows. Firstly, an introduction to SAP technical change management. What is a transport? Difference between customizing and workbench changes. What is an SAP dual landscape and what is a retrofit transport? And then finally, key points to consider when it comes to managing SAP technical changes. If you are new here, my name is Arun and I make videos about the SAP topics. Please subscribe to the channel to keep up to date. SAP Technical Change Management When an SAP system is newly implemented or when you are operating in a BAU environment, there will be constant requirements to make changes to the SAP solution. Those changes are developed in the development system and then moved across the landscape. Usually, an SAP landscape will contain three systems. One is the development system where the changes are made or programs are developed then those changes will be moved into a quality assurance system or also known as the test system. Testing will happen in the quality assurance system. Once the testing is completed and passed, the same changes will be moved into the production system. This way, we can ensure that the SAP landscape is synchronized and the changes that are required to be made are moved through the landscape in a controlled manner. There can be multiple clients available within the same SAP system as well, which can be used for various purposes. For example, Client 300 in the development system can be used as a development client where the changes are created and Client 301 within the development system can be used as a unit test client. What is a transport? A transport is a virtual container that will capture the changes that are made in the development system and move those changes to other SAP systems in the landscape. When a transport request is released in the SAP development system, two types of files are created. One is the core file which is also known as control file and the other one is the data file. These files play crucial roles in the SAP transport process. The core file contains metadata and control information about the transport request. This includes details such as the type of objects being transported, the source and target system, and instructions for the transport system on how to process the transport. Core files are stored at the operating system level in user SAP trans core files directory. The data file contains the actual data or objects that are being transported. This includes source code, configuration settings, and any other data that needs to be moved from one system to the another. Data file is stored in the user SAP trans data directory on the SAP file system at the operating system level. When the changes are moved from one SAP system to the other, the core files and the data files associated to those transports are also moved to the respective SAP system at the operating system level. When it comes to changes, there are two types of changes in SAP. One is the customizing change and the other one is the workbench change. Customizing changes are related to the configuration settings of an SAP system. These changes typically affect how the system behaves and operates based on business requirements. They are often client specific, meaning they apply only to a particular client within the SAP system. For example, creating a new company code is considered as a customizing change. Let's see how it's usually done in the SAP system. Firstly, you will navigate to transaction SPRO and open the SAP reference IMG, which is the implementation guide. Then go to enterprise structure, definition, financial accounting, define company code. Then click on new entries and enter the details for the new company code, such as the company code, company name, city, country, currency, and language, and then save those entries. Upon saving those entries, a customizing transport request is created to transport this configuration to other systems. Then comes the workbench change. Say for example, you want to create a new report in the system. You go to transaction SE38, which is the ABAP workbench transaction, create a new report. And once you save and activate the report, the system will ask you to capture those changes in a workbench transport request. The transport then can be moved to other SAP systems. Workbench transports are applied to all the clients in the SAP system, irrespective of which client it is imported into. These are the SAP transactions that are used to manage the transport management system in SAP. The first one is STMS. This is the central transaction for configuring and managing the transport landscape. 
It allows you to configure transport routes, import queues, and monitor transport logs. Then STMS underscore import. This transaction is used specifically to import transport requests into a target system. SE01, this is the main transaction for managing transport requests. It allows you to create, display, and manage transport requests and tasks. SE09 is used for workbench requests, which typically include development objects like programs, function modules, and classes. SE10 is used for customizing requests, which includes configuration settings and client-specific changes. SEC1 is used to copy transport requests between clients within the same system. Now let's take a look at what is a SAP dual landscape. Say for example, you have a BAU SAP landscape comprising of three SAP S4HANA systems. One is the development, the other one is test, and the other one is the production system. The S4HANA systems are on release 2020, and your organization decides to do a S4HANA release upgrade to 2023. Now you cannot just start upgrading the BAU landscape to 2023 since it will take some time for development and testing. And until then, the changes to the production system cannot happen in that case. So usually what happens is that a dual landscape will be created with an upgraded version of S4HANA. And the changes that are created in the BAU landscape will be retrofitted back to the upgraded landscape to keep the landscape in sync. So the landscape will look something like this. The BA landscape will have a development test and a production system, and the project landscape will have a project development and project test system. The S4HANA systems on the project landscape will be an upgraded version of S4HANA. In this example, it will be S4HANA 2023. Project-related changes will be developed in the project development system, moved to the project test system when they are ready to be tested, and finally to the production system during the go-live. The changes that are moved to production system from the BAU landscape will be retrofitted into the project landscape. Then finally, when all the testing is completed, the production system will be upgraded to S4HANA 2023 and the transports will be imported. Then the BAE development and the test system will also be upgraded and the transports will be imported into them to keep them all in sync. This is to ensure that all the SAP systems in the landscape are in sync when it comes to the changes. Things to note while managing transports in the SAP landscape. There are tools available like Charm, Active Control, and RevTrack that are used to create and manage transports, including retrofit transports in the project landscape. While creating retrofit transports, sometimes conflicts might arise when the same object is being changed at both the development system. Tools like Charm shows that there is a conflict and the developers need to work together to resolve those conflicts before the changes can be moved across the landscape. If the conflicts are not resolved, then the changes created by one developer will be overwritten by the other changes created by another developer when the changes are moved into the production and the system will not work properly. You should also make sure that all the transports that are imported into the test system are imported into the production system as well and none of them are left behind. And also maintaining the sequence while importing the transports is important. Only certain people should be able to approve the changes to be moved from development to test and test to production system to ensure control and governance. Tools like Charm in Solution Manager and Active Control or RevTrack should be used to ensure the transports are correctly captured, conflicts and downgrade protection warnings are resolved, and the transports are moved across the landscape in a sequential manner. SAP Cloud ALM, even though it doesn't contain all the full retrofit functionality at the moment, SAP has planned to introduce those functionalities in early 2025. So going forward, Cloud ALM can also be used to manage transports for S4HANA systems. SAP transport and change management is a complicated space and also a very important aspect. So it should be managed properly to ensure SAP systems are operating effectively and also the projects that you are implementing can go live without any issues. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, please like and share it with your friends who might also benefit from the content. Thank you.